Okay, so there are a lot of assessments out there that people are using for work and to assess personalities. The question is, which one is best for you, for your team, and for your company? I am Will Graham. I am a certified working genius facilitator. And today we're going to pull back the layers a little bit on some of the other assessments that are out there. You've got Strengths Finder, you've got MBTI, also known as Myers Briggs, you've got DISC, you've got the Enneagram. And of course, you have my personal favorite for work, which is the working genius. Now, the next thing that we're going to take a look at that I'm excited about is the DISC model. And this is probably the first assessment model that I ever worked with. And it's, it's really neat. There's some different layers and aspects to this. There are lots of different vendors and contexts and types, which we'll see in here in a minute. As I mentioned, there are different versions of this. There's a version for premarital counseling. There's a version for... Um, doing certain types of work or being in certain industries and then there's there's a couple of others um, you'll also find because there are different um, this isn't necessarily a copyrighted thing you're gonna find different vendors and providers of the disk assessment now let's just kinda go down uh, the disk model here for a minute uh, D uh, primarily equals dominance and what you'll notice that for people that are high D's is that they tend to be more task oriented and we'll get more into the task versus people oriented part of the equation here in a minute. Um, I equals influencing, and influencers tend to be more people-oriented than task-oriented. That's why you see this quadrant here, left side, task-oriented, right side, more people-oriented. The S is going to be steady or stable. Uh, these are people for whom steadiness and stability is very important. They tend to be more people-oriented. And then the C equals conscientious or cautious. And these folks tend to be more task-focused, more task-oriented than people-oriented. Now, most people have either one of two scenarios. Either have one letter that's high and is much higher than the others, or they have two letters that are the highest letters, and they're somewhat close. And that does make a difference in how you define their behavior and their approach. For instance, someone who is high D is going to be very dominant and more likely they're going to be a real taskmaster. Someone who is close, as in like let's say their D and their I are close together but they're, they're the highest two letters, um, they're called the dynamic influencer and they're going to tend to be somewhat more, more task and people oriented combined versus just one or the other. Now someone who is a high C, it, which is of course uh, going to be your conscientious or cautious person, let's say their other letters are pretty low in comparison, they're going to be considered very cautious and very task-oriented. Now, the strength of DISC is predicting how people get along and how they communicate with one another. Now it's time for the main event. We're going to take a look at the model that we're comparing all these other models to, and that is the six types of working genius. As you know, this is a new model that helps people discover their natural gifts and thrive in their work and life. There are six types of working genius. There's the genius of wonder, the genius of invention, the genius of discernment, galvanizing, of enablement, and tenacity. Those are the six types of working genius. Now, the question is, what kind of work have you been naturally gifted to do? Now, each of us has two areas that are considered our working geniuses. In my case, that's my working genius continuum. That's what's represented in the green there. And then two hours that are considered our working frustrations, which you'll see on the slide there, represented in red. And then two areas that are in the middle that we neither completely find miserable nor completely joyful. These are our working competencies represented in the gold. Now, what are the working geniuses? The working geniuses are the activities that bring us joy, energy, and passion, and we're good at. Working frustrations are activities that rob us of joy and energy, and we're not particularly good at them. And working competencies are activities that neither feed nor drain us, in which we can do fairly well, but for a limited period of time. Now, there are three phases of work. The six steps of working genius model rest on the notion that with every project or initiative, there are three distinct phases, all of which require different geniuses to accomplish the work. The, free, the three phases are ideation, activation, and implementation. Now, this is the altitude of geniuses. This starts at the 30,000 foot level and goes all the way down to the ground or 10 feet off of the ground. 
In the ideation phase, that's where you see the geniuses of wonder invention having the most input or value. The next phase is activation. These are at slightly lower levels. This is where you see discernment and galvanizing having the most input or value. And then last, as you get towards the ground, you have the implementation phase at 5,000 feet and on the ground respectively, where you see enablement and tenacity are the geniuses that have the most input and value in that phase or altitude of work. That I, and one of the things I think really sets the working genius apart from some of the other models is the team dynamics. It's like, how do you get the different team members to work together based on their working geniuses? One of the benefits of the working genius model is something called the working genius team map. And what you're looking at here is a sample. You see all of the working geniuses, that you see a box for each one. They're separated by the responsive geniuses on the left and the disruptive geniuses on the right. And here you have an example of a team and who's geniuses fall in which areas and whose frustrations fall in what areas and then you see where this team is light on certain geniuses for in the case that we're looking at here with this particular team you see that wonder is very underrepresented here but then you have a whole lot of discernment and quite a bit of enablement as well when it comes to things like both wonder and tenacity you see that there are a lot of frustrations represented amongst the team Speaking of that, if you really want to give your team a gift, really consider a Working Genius Live workshop for your team. It isn't just a workshop, it is a leadership team experience. When you give them the gift of Working Genius Workshop, you give your people the gift of understanding their natural strengths and accelerate your organization's results. Just go to geniusworkshop.live. There you will see a menu of options for the Working Genius Half Day event. Pick the one that most works for you. Again, geniusworkshop.live.